Previously on Interiors by Design, the contestants had a dramatic showdown. I refuse to join them. Don't talk about me. I don't have a conscience. I don't know. We can't become a wicked person. Matilda left the competition. You know, for that, I think we're going to stand even stronger on our points that you're going to have to go back to the drawing board. Mm. And Lecon didn't get immunity. On this week's episode, the contestants will visit one of Nigeria's top fashion retail store, Grey Velvet. Grey Velvet is an important example of the role interior designs plays in the creation of successful retail spaces. Retail design is a vital part of an interior designer's portfolio. Today we're going to be looking at the interactions that are required for successful design within the retail space. This is a space where you are thinking about not just the user, but the products on display, the things that ultimately need to be sold for the business to run. So we're thinking about traffic flows, light, and the interaction of the people within the space. This is a context in which an interior designer needs to put on very many hats. We're going to be looking at that today and what better space to start than in a fashion store. The contestants are delighted to be in this beautiful space. Hi guys. Hi. So today we're at the Lecky branch of Grey Velvet and this is a retail store. They're actually a fashion concession store. And I'm sure you can guess what today's episode is about. Any guesses? Retail. 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 Five stars for you, fair. <laughs> so retail design. First of all, there are a lot of elements that have to go into retail design. And then there are also a lot of relationships that you need to manage when designing a retail space. And also a lot of times, the retail space isn't that big. This is actually quite a generous sized store. But when you're doing retail design, you're thinking about so many things at the same time, but still trying to put a product at the forefront of your design. A retail space is a place where you're showcasing a product primarily. Sometimes it's a service, but it's mainly products when you're talking about retail. So you're thinking about displays, you're thinking about what the product is, who is the person coming in to buy the product, how do you want the product to look within the space, what does the space itself look like. And then you're thinking about things like light, you're thinking about traffic flows, the experience that the buyer has, and then you're thinking about also the back end. There are things that are happening behind the scenes. You can see tills, you can see salespeople. In um, a fashion retail store, you're talking about changing rooms, stock rooms. If you're thinking of a restaurant, you're thinking about the kitchen. How do the people that work there interact with the space? Before you're even thinking about the person that's coming in to buy whatever you're selling. You have to make provision for all these spaces. And then in terms of even the relationships you are now working with, sometimes you're building a store that's within a mall. That means you have a landlord that's separate from your actual client. Then you have your client who is not really the end user of the space but wants to sell something. Then you have the end user who's the person that's coming in. Then you have the products. And you as a designer are thinking about all these things when you're thinking about the space. So retail is one of those areas of design where 
there are a lot of things going on but the client doesn't want to know about it or the end user that's why they're paying you so you need to figure out how to make those things work so today i actually want you to look around this space i think this is the space that's been executed very well i want you to look around see what's going on pick up on some subtle things that are happening. Why are certain things displayed a certain way? If you have any questions, ask me. The things that you notice, that you think, oh, why do they do this like this? Ask and let's, let's have a, a bit of a discussion about it. The contestants look around the beautiful store. As the mentor said, it's not just about the beautiful space, but the functionality. this be a challenge in disguise? Is it all a test? Oh, I love that bag. What is it about the space, the display, <laughs> the display that you're looking at that's of well, interest? The functionality, the thought put into this, okay. that is actually a mirror on the stand, because if you're trying sunglasses, you, you want, want to, to look, see. Okay. You want to go here, and even if you're walking, you can fall into or something. And I break it. Away. Okay. So, I mean, it's, they, they really it's right it. there. Yeah. In terms of display, you have to almost make the scenario as real as where you would be using the product. So, if you're showing shoes, people have to be able to move the shoes around, put them on the floor, you know, see how much it costs, what size is it, have access, you know, to be able to interact with the product. Let's see what the other contestants are up to. So Lefon and Ife, what have you found that is of interest to you? The platform okay. the also acts as storage. Fantastic, yeah. It's not um, so high, like the usual generic storage. storage. So it, it's not so obvious that, oh, it's storage, and then it doesn't have handles. Yes. So immediately it has handles, and you know that, oh. It's a storage. I like how there's like a mirror mm -hmm. close to every, um, let's say every section. Yeah. So probably someone can easily take so you can pick uh, things up, put it against yourself. Yeah. You already look, you can quickly make a decision. Again, you're interacting with the item on sale. Yeah. Okay. Are you looking at the display cabinet? Yes. What do I, you think? I was just you know, noticing how it sort of divided this space mm -hmm. from this space. Okay. You know, imagine if this was not here. Yeah. This would be a very, very big, empty dead place, space. Dead, uh -huh. dead space. So this has divided and it has even helped in the circulation. Exactly. So, you know, what do you why, think? Why do you think it's so close to the tip? Like, it's, I think it's like not as expensive as the others. Security. Oh. It's the kind of thing. If it was in a corner, mm -hmm. it's someone that's at the tip. Yeah, if you put your jewelry or small fingers. items, fast fingers, mm -hmm. so the person at the till has visual on things, the little things that you can put away. Mm -hmm. So those are things that you as a designer have to think, think about. about. So little things like that, you're, you're thinking about it when you're displaying items for sale. Because ultimately, that's the bottom line in the retail space. You want to sell. Yeah. When you're dealing with a brand that has multiple locations, it's important to have some things that tie the brand together so the experience is familiar to the, to the um, end user. So even when you're building within restrictions, as much as possible, try to start drawing those things out that make the space seem familiar to the end user. We're going to go to another retail space and you'll see how that also plays out in that space. So let's go. Yummy! A cup of tea and red velvet, please. Of course, we are nuts about cakes. With cool colors and a cozy atmosphere, the contestants are excited to be at Nuts About Cakes, one of Nigeria's most visited bakeries. Plus, remember I said there are different kinds of retail spaces. This is a different uh, retail space. This is one that we actually designed, Inu Design. So it is a retail space, but it's also a cafe and a bakery. 
So you still have things to sell and services to provide within a space. Like I said, it's functional. You can see where you know, the seating area, the service area, the area for items that are to be sold. And then on the other side, that's the back office where you know all the admin, the cooking, the food preparation happens. It is also important to think about the traffic flow. You know, you sort of manage the user past the display unit. They're going past what you're actually trying to sell. They can see it, they can smell it. That's how you're selling it. Those are the little kind of things you have to think about when you're doing retail design in this sort of context. Another subtle thing we've done is there's a restroom in this space. You don't want to see that when you're actually eating. So it's been veiled with a movable screen. So you can always add little touches like that. It's decorative, but it's actually there for a more functional purpose. So, you know, you just play around with that. Here we played around with color because the one said, the brief said fresh. So we went for the obvious apple green mix, white. You can't go wrong with white. They didn't want bland walls, so we used um, a subtle gray. So it's a bit of color, but it's not obtrusive. Those are the subtle kind of things you have to, you have to think about, as well as think about the brand within a retail space. Of course, some of the contestants had questions. Dependent lights, I yeah. noticed where you placed them. What yes. informed that decision? In this case, because the pendant lights were not meant to be functional, they were more decorative, so it was more an accessorizing type thing. Now, if you wanted them to be functional, they wouldn't be so high up. You would drop them to actually make use of the light. The advantage in a space like this is there's a lot of glass, so there's a lot of natural light, and this place is open more during the day, so the lighting wasn't a big issue but then we also wired the pendant light separate from the more functional spotlights so the spotlights are on one circuit you can control that and then the pendant lights are on another i like the materials that you've used yeah can you um talk a little bit more about how you source the materials uh, like your banquet seats okay. and then the tables and chairs okay. yeah and the tiles too okay so this space was a mix of brought in and made in Nigeria. So, like, some of the furniture was made, the benches were made, because it, they, that had to be custom made. The bench itself had to fit a specific space. So that was more, um, how should we say, bespoke, made to measure. The cabinets for the display we made here as well. So a lot of the woodwork was actually made here, because we've got quite good um, carpenters and artisans. And some of the other finishing touches we brought in, like the chairs over there that are, they're a reproduction of a classic chair. I don't know if any of you re recognize them. They're Eames chairs, they're a reproduction of those. We brought those in as well because those are made under license. We had a specific brief. So sometimes you'll get a brief that you can satisfy with local materials. And sometimes you have a, a brief that you have to, you have to mix and match. So the last challenge ended on a rather interesting note. We made the members of the losing team give up who they thought was the weakest link and that person was sent back to the drawing board. Today, to begin with, we're going to do the opposite. So we're going to get the members of the winning team to nominate who they think should be immune from elimination. Congratulations on winning the last challenge. Thank you did very you. well. Thank you. So as I'm sure you noticed, we didn't talk about immunity for yeah, the well for whoever won. As you might have guessed, we're not gonna give three of you immunity because we're just not like that. <laughs> so what we're going to do today is I want each of you to nominate who you think should get immunity. And you can't nominate <laughs> You know we're, we're we're full of tricks. Okay. So I'm going to give you guys a minute to think about it. Who do you think is deserving of immunity? I'm winning the last challenge. Think about you know the task and all that went into it. So I'm just going to give you a quick minute to think about it. Okay. Uh oh, it's going to be a tough one on these contestants. Is it Ife or Umi or the man in the middle, Tayo? What happens now? How did your deliberation go? Mm. <laughs> so I'll start with Umi. Who do you think should go? Ife. You think Ife should win the challenge? Okay. Taya, who do you think should win? Ife, who do you think should win? Umi. You can't say you can't say yourself. You said Umi. Okay. Can I ask why? 
I'll ask the two of you actually, since you both nominated the same person. Because she held the, the drill down for us. Okay. That's why. Actually, <laughs> she had some drill skills. Yeah, yeah okay. she held the drill she, down for us. She made it work. Oh, okay. So, do you agree, Ife, or do you want somebody else to get it? <laughs> just, you humbly accept. Yeah, of course, I, I won't mind. Yeah. <laughs> okay, okay, so, so Ife is immune from elimination, the next challenge. But I actually like the fact that you guys agreed quite quickly about the sugar. So this is kind of teaching them not just how to throw people under the bus, but also how to celebrate the winners amongst them. As you know, three people are not getting immunity, not on this show. On today's challenge, the contestants will work on a floor pan of a retail space within a mall. This should be fun. So guys, you know today was all about retail, and I'm sure you knew there'd be a challenge coming. Um, in front of you, we have floor plans, dimension floor plans that we've handed out of a retail space within a mall. Now, the floor plan is dimension, and I'm going to give you a very brief brief, <laughs> so to speak. We're going to do the floor plan for a retail store that sells shoes and handbags. Now, to be fair, I'm not really concerned about your technical drawing. I'm concerned about your consideration when it comes to the layout, all the things I've talked about today. The contestants have been divided in two groups yet again. Sean doesn't seem to like that idea, but hey, he doesn't have a choice. Your time starts now. Will the contestants really keep to details this time? Have they learned from their mistakes? Group work always has some tension, but let's see who comes out on top. Don't forget, the winner gets to attend a design course at the prestigious Decor and Rainbow Interior Design Academy in the UK. Guest judge, the popular hair entrepreneur and stylish interior designer, Tracy of Interior Culture by Obiageli, shared her creative and insightful knowledge. I think it's refreshing that, you know, as a business owner and an interior designer, it's so amazing that there are people with this much talent out there. And I love this platform because I wasn't privy enough to showcase my work on this platform and it's 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 just amazing that you know there are people there's someone who thought about this idea to give young minds young talents you know a place to showcase their talent hey guys hello so we'll start with um Kyle it's there and oh they can see of the most like Tayo. I didn't know he was part of the group. yeah so um <laughs> So it's a shoe and bag store. When you're walking in, mm -hmm. we didn't want, like, you're just walking by the mall and you just enter. We wanted to create some kind of entrance. Experience. And also, like, a three dimensional um, display box. Okay, where is that in the plan? Show us the display. display. Okay. Where it says display. So, see it. Okay. so the door is not directly on this uh, walkway. So it's a display window. Yeah. yeah. So okay. Walk in. Okay. And then we decided to stick to the um, perimeter walls because okay. we didn't have so much depth. So even if we're putting like units at the center, there's still um, um, enough space to actually separate and move around. around. Yes. Okay. I, I remember she said something about lighting, um, but you didn't showcase anything in, in regards to lighting. Did you have any plans for lighting? We are, we are ready. You know, we had um, the display here. Yeah. Okay. This display can only go just about three or two meters. Okay. So definitely there are going to be spotlights dedicated okay. to shelves. Okay. So any like like for the um the bags here they will have their own dedicated lights. Accept lighting. But how about yes. like lighting oh, for the, the entire space? Yeah. General lighting. I think there will be general general lights like very big wide so it gives you 
like okay. daylight. Like daylight. You see, I mean, definitely because they didn't expect yeah. us to um, imagine, yeah. like, yeah. assume that there would be light. light in there. But okay. it, it's definitely a great layout. Definitely, I like ideas, and the fact that you are coming up with ideas definitely is excellent. Yeah. So talk us through, talk us through your your floor plan. Okay, then at the top we have this um, shoe stand. It's like it's steel, and then it's glass as in glass coming out like up down up down for every shoe to have like you know so, their shoes so it's like a shoe glass yeah, yeah exactly okay. like shoes like shoes yeah. individually and the bag yeah. or like so you, and that's yeah. in the display yes it's okay this is the um cashier <coughs> area okay this this counter here is it's actually recessed like it's mm -hmm. recessed in there are shelves here okay we have a stuff from here for storage yeah Okay. You move around, around, and then we have this like sitting area okay. where we have the champagne, but it's a luxury store. Okay, the yeah. champagne so is you even them. Chill <laughs> here. You have to sit there. Okay. You have to sit here with and a little table, table yeah. okay. a glass for the bar to drink. Okay, let me so, 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 yeah, maybe yeah. let me take yeah. over from her. From here, like the stockroom, because you know we've created a stockroom inside the store, so yeah. you don't want to leave this. Walk just there. Okay. That's why we actually tasted the champagne bar. It's a bar where they have like little shelves with champagne there. And then there's so there's a decorative aspect to this exactly. champagne yeah, bar. Yes, yes. So it's functional, but it's, it's also functional and decorative okay. for the wall. And then you have a seating area just by the bar because I mean, if you have a glass of champagne, you want to sit down and I'll actually put the drink down. Can you get a bar of champagne? Bring out the cards, bring out the coins. Back card, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, okay. I think. If you have any questions, I can explain to you from well, the air here. I think we're good. I think we're pretty good. Is the champagne free, by the way? Yes. Okay. Ah, that's also. Okay. That's also. The shoes will be expensive. <laughs> yeah, for the shoes to be expensive, there should be something to complement like. Yeah. Fair enough. Fair enough. Fair enough. Okay. Perfect. Okay. okay. Free. Well, well done, guys. I think. It looks good. Well done to all, all the platform. Platform. Thank you. I th I thought it was actually pretty good what they came up with. Considering the time, the I know I always say this, yeah. but it's always kind of, I know how it is, it's the pressure. Impressive. Yeah. It's impressive. Yeah. But they did a good job, and it seemed like when they delivered, it seemed like they were actually in unison, like they knew what they were all yeah. talking about, mm -hmm. and they were speaking the same story, so that was actually quite nice. Um, in terms of the details, yeah, I thought they did a good job. I, I, I mean, I mean, slick stickler for concept, yeah. so I thought that was a bit lost for mm -hmm. both the themes, the actually, so I actually, there, there was, was no, was yeah, so that, that. that was a bit disappointing, but in general, I think they did a good job, and... For the first team, I did like that they tried to explore, um, from a creative point of view, with the whole angular, um, that with display the, with the display unit, unit. Yeah. and I liked that they were trying to be different. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But in also trying to be different, they, they lost, lost the, the they, they lost, lost the, the function, yeah. mm -hmm. you know, and they lost the you know the idea of what they're trying to sell okay. and how they were supposed to project that. So that I, I'll give them a for effort. Okay. So what about the second the second team? The I second think, store. No, you go ahead. I know. I, know, I think <laughs> they did pretty good. I liked the fact that again. After they kept going on, on they, they now spoke about the colors and the branding. And of course, the killer for me was the champagne. The champagne bar. Was Don't judge me. Oh, that was great. <laughs> I really like that. But the champagne uh, bar was But the really bottom line was they thought about the customer's experience. Exactly. And like, what can we add to it? Mm -hmm. Okay, but I think we've kind of. Yeah. I kind of get the feeling we've decided. Yes. Oh, I have. Really yes. Same. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, you guys seem really tired right now. And today wasn't even like an outdoor challenge, so you guys should pack up. Anyway, so <laughs> they're exhausted. <clears throat> it was nice to see you guys go into the in-depth of what interior design is all about. But I think I was saying um, for group A, what for me I thought that there was something that was missing in terms of your um, outflow at the end. And I think it came from the beginning, which was the concept and design part of it. It seemed like you guys didn't know who you were designing for. You should have come up with a strong concept and clients in your head before you went ahead to do the design because it, it became lost a bit. Um, group B, you guys did a good job. In the beginning, I'm sure you guys know I was completely lost. At yeah. one point, I think I almost rolled my eyes. Yeah. I'm like, exactly. what's going on here? <laughs> there are some things that you guys did that I thought were pretty sharp. The branding, you spoke about it. You said this is the branding, and you spoke about your colors. I was reading your note sheet, and it seemed like you thought through a lot of the points that Mrs. Fora had spoken to you about in the beginning, and 
you, you made sure that you had every single point noted for, and that was good. I mean, the three Ds that you came up with, sharp, sharp, yeah. I'm like, hey, yeah, bring cool. it up. That was pretty Skills. good, it's nice. So that was... But I guess, I mean, we're down to six now, so we, we already know that, you know. The, the bar has been raised, you know, we're, and now we're working with the best. Yes, so. the best. I would have to say, for me, it was Group B. That. That is the winning team. Okay. So group <laughs> the group B is going to stay. Um, I Umi, mean, Shil, Vivian, Vivian's and Vivian. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well done, guys. So, <laughs> but so yeah. I guess our winning team can, you know, give us a minute. The judges have chosen the bottom group, but seems like a first challenge isn't over. The closer we get to the end of the, the series, the tougher it's going to be. Um, you know, Ife actually won immunity from the last challenge, so she's actually safe from elimination this challenge. Um, so Osaru is gonna, <laughs> you know, break the news to you. Okay, so Ife, we're gonna give you the chance to let us know who is gonna go back to the drawing board today. Yes, <laughs> we are going to give you the chance. Who will she vote to be the weakest member of the group? Well, the thing is, in my head, they are two great people. They have their merits. They've come this far, so they are not just newbies and so on that. So I know that I have to judge based on the challenge. I would pick Tyre to move forward. What happens to so Lego? Who's going back to the drawing board? I think Lego should go back to the drawing board. Sadly, it's game over for Lecon. Until the next time, it's back to the drawing board. It's always a bit sad um, to see someone go, but like we said at the very beginning, it's a competition and we have to whittle people down until we get to a winner. I never thought I would have to choose who to evict. Uh, having to choose who to evict now makes it more personal. Uh, I'm feeling fine. Uh, I've enjoyed so far. I've learned so far. I've met interesting people that are more experienced than I am. Everything seems fine, and congratulations to all contestants who scaled through. Share your thoughts on social media with the hashtag Back to the Drawing Board. We would like to hear from you. Follow us on Red TV, Interiors by Design, for more engaging updates. Let's wait and see what next week's has in store, shall we? We're actually like down to the to the big boys now, so, <laughs> so to speak. So it's a, it's a very tight one now.